talk. I'm practicing the way he would would heal. I'm practicing the way he would give. I'm practicing doing his will. I'm practicing that. I'm striving to make heaven my home. People have forgotten that song. They can sing all kinds of songs these days, but they don't sing that song. I'm striving to make heaven my home. They're too consumed about the physical surroundings that they find themselves in, whether it's this or whether it's that, whether it has 10 rooms or one room or this or that or the other thing, whether it matches up to the neighbors, whether it matches up to this one, whether it's more than what mama had, whether it's more than what they, they're so consumed in all the worldly attitudes that they've forgotten about striving to make heaven their home. This is only a temporary dwelling. You will either spend time and eternity in heaven or you will spend time and eternity in hell. There is only those two choices. So if you're ready to receive your crown, amen. And if you're not, stop and go back and read the word. If you're not, stop and go back and pray. If you're not, find a place, <clears throat> find a place to spend time purposefully with the Lord, begging him to reveal what it is he needs to see in you. Amen. And also, I hope that you have had an opportunity to go to the uh, spiritual gifts test website that I gave you last week. Um, if you have, then you can also see real life ways of whether you have it uh, to bless others through the many gifts and talents that the Lord has bestowed upon us. It's not just about, uh, well, I, I don't think I can preach. Well, first of all, your pulpit can be anywhere. The pulpit can be in the in the truck of your in the cab of your truck. The pulpit can be on the street corner when you're helping children walk across the street. The the pulpit can be in the in the nursing home. The pulpit can be on the basketball court. The pulpit can be in in, in the actual court, the court of law. It doesn't say that you're just designate the 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 you know, the specific surroundings of your where you can use your gift. You don't have to wait for somebody to lay his hands on you to use the gift. If you have read the word of God and you're walking in the word of God, then he is revealing through his spirit what your gifts and talents are. Do you encourage people? Do you have compassion on people? Do you give? You know, many people have different styles of giving. They may give their time. They may give money. They may give... Uh, hugs they may give you know any 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 little any little thing any little you know any little, any little trinket can mean something uh, how about just a smile amen what about opening the door for someone right what about carrying packages you see somebody struggling what about bringing in the garbage can for your neighbor you you shouldn't have, you don't have to wait for somebody to ask you you shouldn't have to wait for somebody to call you up and need something if you have a gift use it because if you don't use it then you're not glorifying god oh i know we're very much concerned as whether we're glorifying everybody else we get you know we will stand up and cheer and holler and all that stuff through the football games and the concerts and you know uh, go play golf all day long and go you know do movies two and three hours you know and some people watch movies all day long they glorify all that they have time to glorify violence. They have time to glorify crime. They have time to glorify abuse. Glory and, e and even things that just glorify themselves. So many people are self, self, self. Me, me, me. It's all about me. Well, there's a problem with that. It's not all about you. It's all about Jesus. It's all about God the Father. So we need to think about all of those things before we can even think because we don't want to get too haughty, right? This is, this is the only reason that we're emphasizing these tests and these questions is that we don't want to be too haughty. We know that for the grace of God, because of the grace of God, we could be 
out on the street. We could be a drug addict. On the with the grace of God, maybe maybe that's what you're suffering with right now. And so you need to reach out to the Lord because He's the only one that can heal your heart and your depression and your mind and your soul. The Father and this Bible has all the answers that we need. Every herb and healing medicine and and bitters of the earth is in the Bible. Every healing is in the Bible because the place that we need healing the most is in our mind. We need to renew our mind, get our minds in, in accordance, matching up with the Lord's mind as much as we in our human self can. We need to, as the word of God says, think on these things that he designated for us to think on. The world didn't come up with positive thinking. The Lord God came up with power, positive thinking. He said, think on these things. Think on the things that are lovely. Think on the things that are wholesome. Think on the things that are pure. Think on the things that are just. Think on the things that are godly. But no, there's people that just worship the dark. They crave the dark. They crave the violence. They crave this and that and the other. But don't crave to be at one, at one minute. Atonement at one with God. At one with God. We cannot be at one with God in spirit if we're still catering. That's right, catering to the flesh, our fleshly desires, our carnal wants, our carnal needs. It's the whole purpose behind some fasting is to curb and put in check those carnal needs, whatever those carnal needs are. It's not just about not fish or, or not eating beef or not eating this or that it's about disciplining yourself your physical self so that you may spend more time developing your spiritual self because those that remember god is a spirit we must worship him in spirit and in truth, with our spiritual selves developing and meshing and craving to be with him and pleasing him. So after all is said and done, some people talk about these crowns. They talk about maybe there's seven or, you know, I found at least five in scripture. And if you find some others, um, please, you know, drop me a, drop me a message uh, as to any others that, um, that I don't cover tonight. So let's just focus here a moment on the name, the crowns. Remember all these texts, all this Bible study that we've been doing for the last two years, man, all 130 some episodes and several, several hours are all about making sure that we'll be ready when Jesus comes. All about making sure that our lamps our oil lamps are full of the Holy Spirit. We, this earthen vessel, right? This earthen vessel, we have treasures in this earthen vessel. The scripture says that treasure is the Holy Spirit. We want to develop our spirit. So then, then we can know that through all of that, we are promised a reward as we talked about last week. And part of the reward that we're promised are crowns. So first of all, there's a type of crown uh, called a Stephanos crown. Stephanos crown. It is a crown that belongs to royalty. And we know that Jesus himself receives not one crown, not two crowns, not three crowns, but many crowns, Revelation says. But we're just hoping to get one, amen? And how do we do this? And remember, this is not a crown of gold sitting on your head, although it may be. Uh, the, the, the scriptures speak of a crown. But we're going to talk about some crowns that maybe somebody has not discussed with you before. So let's first go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews. Hebrews coffee. No, not Hebrews coffee, but Hebrews chapter 12 in the book of the Holy Bible, and I hear some pages turning, hopefully not just my own, amen, <laughs> so we go to the book of Hebrews chapter 12,
and uh, verse 2, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. There, uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and start with verse 1. Uh, reading from the Amplified Bible, or the Amplified Version translation. Therefore, then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, the great cloud of witnesses, all the way from uh, Genesis uh, to, na to now, right? All, all the prophets, all the disciples, Jesus himself. And the people that you know that have been walking with the Lord, that crowd of that cloud of witnesses, who have borne testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, every unnecessary weight, and the sin that so easily, and so readily, so deftly, and cleverly clings to and entangles us. Let us run with patient endurance. There's that endurance. Remember a few weeks ago we talked about enduring, right? Patient endurance and steadfastness or steady and active persistence. You know, I've used the word purposeful before, but this is even better. Active persistence. Let the appointed course of the race that is set before us, looking away from all that will distract. Are we able to look away from all that will distract? When we talk about fasting, you could fast from TV, you could fast from games, you could fast from movies, you could fast from you know soap operas or whatever it is that distracts you from Jesus. And even some people listening, they say, oh, you know, I'm listening to Christian music or I'm watching Christian shows, but that can also be a distraction because the Lord wants you to spend time with him. The Lord wants you to spend time studying his word, praying with him, through him, and in him with the Holy Spirit. So we need to think about looking away from all that will distract and looking away to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, giving the first incentive for our belief, and is also its finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection. He, for the joy of obtaining the prize, the prize that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Are we able to say that we can ignore despising? Can we ignore shame? You know, from the world, right? Because the world is all about crucifying uh, figuratively Christians. Crucifying you if you stand for Jesus. Or you can go and protest in the streets for this or that, or stand for this and that, stand as a Republican, stand as a Democrat, stand as a Libertarian, stand as all that other stuff. You can stand for that, but are you standing for Jesus? Are you embarrassed to be standing for Jesus? If you are not embarrassed to stand for Jesus, maybe stop right now where you are, maybe not, if not you're driving, and see if you can stand for Jesus. People stand at concerts for hours, worshiping and hollering and screaming after some person who doesn't even know them. But can you stand for Jesus for a few minutes? Because Jesus knows you intimately. He wants to know you intimately. And he wants you to know him intimately. So here we're talking about the behavior leading to getting the crown making sure that we are not distracted by all those other things, making sure that we are steadfast and unmovable and that we remove, that we eliminate, that we strip off everything, every sin that clings to us and that entangles us so that we can be actively persistent. You remember there was somebody talking about persisting, persisting. Well, can we actively persist? 